Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Now, as broadcasters, we love making it easier for oh, us yeah. to switch camera angles. Don't you think, Sasha? I think so. I absolutely, absolutely agree. And Totally. Part of that process, especially in a studio like this, or if you are webcasting from home or any, you know, any type of scenario where you need to be able to switch now, having something like this device is just amazing. Right. Now, full disclosure, we have a broadcast system that is Telestream Wirecast powered. Right. This is only a controller. So this will control anything. Right. But it is not a camera switcher. We make it look like a camera switcher right. because that's the buttons that I programmed in. Sasha might want this on the desk at work and turn this into all of the buttons that you use in your chiropractic software. For example, you might want this on your computer at home so that you can, all of your video editing or Ooh. anything else that you do, you can program every single button on here to do anything that you want. So maybe I do need it at home. I mm -hmm. need it too. I so I'm going to actually push a button here to get in a little bit closer so that I can show you the stream deck. So this is what it looks like to us tonight. So we have camera shots for all of us, and we have a wire cast button down here that allows us to start and stop recording, start and stop broadcasting, and even turn on and off our computer monitor that we use to be able to see uh, ourselves. And then I can just navigate. Did you notice, Sasha, that when I push the wire cast button, yeah. it brings up a folder? Oh, right? see that? I've programmed it to bring up a folder. We're going to actually be looking at that in a moment. I'm going to push the wide shot, and you're going to see how it switches back to our normal camera. And it's instant. It is instantaneous. We've used Bluetooth devices, keyboards, and things like that in the past to we do camera switching. We had the foot pedals for a while. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it just, there's a delay. Yes. And it, it, sometimes you've got to push it two or three times. Not the case here. But you also notice, on my Wirecast button, it has a Wirecast logo. Mm -hmm. And I'm eventually going to go through, and the Robbie button is going to have a picture of me. Sasha's button is going to have a picture of her and it's going to make things a lot easier for me to okay. be able to look down and know what I'm pushing instead of seeing the robotic like the, the Minecraft default is faces. Just, yeah it's just a, a robot looking thing um, so let's get a look hmm. at how I actually set this up and just keep in mind I, I do want to circle back to the folder Right. Item. Okay, so um, so basically this is our Telestream Wirecast system with the Stream Deck software up on the screen. And all I want to do is I just want to drag a hotkey onto there. And you see in the live camera view that it instantly creates it. I'm going to create one called Robbie. And look at me down in the bottom there on Telestream Wirecast. Mm -hmm. I've assigned Stream Deck to control T. So now in Telestream Wirecast, I simply want to match that up. So I'm going to go into Preferences. And in my keyboard shortcuts, I'm just going to create one for Robbie. It, you can call it whatever you want. And the hotkey is going to be Control T, or Shift T, pardon me. Now, I assign that to my shot. And if I click on any other shot, now watch what happens. I'm going to go and actually push um, the button on the stream deck. And watch the yellow grid that goes around my image. Watch. There. See that? As soon as I push the button, that yellow border goes around the, the shot, showing that it is now the active shot. So next up, what I'd probably want to do is start programming all of my different shots in Telestream Wirecast to be compatible with the Stream Deck. And it's really that simple. You just have to assign a key and, uh, and then assign it to the Stream Deck. So I'm going to assign um, Shift-I as my uh, standby button. And I'm making that global. You see that? So if Wirecast is not in the foreground, it's still going to work. So I assign that to the shot for standby. And then back at the Stream Deck, I create another hotkey. See how it popped up there instantly? And this is just our standby. And Shift-I. And now it's done. It's assigned. So now, if I go back to Telestream Wirecast, and I'm just going to jump back to the Stream Deck here, push that button, see the yellow border? Push my button, there's the yellow border moving down to my shot, push it again, and it bounces around instantaneously. Now, there's something else that's really, really cool about 
the Stream Deck and Telestream Wirecast and how it can work together, and that's that Telestream Wirecast has some hotkeys assigned automatically by default to things like recording. See that? Um, or in our case, uh, maybe we want to create a button that is for turning on the broadcast. There you go. So now we can grab, we know control B, so let's, let's do that. So I'm going to create a new button here for a hotkey, and this is going to be, oh, let's make it a hotkey switch. And now it's going to show if we're live or not when we toggle that button. So I'm going to call this uh, broadcast. and then assign the key for both key one and key two. It's going to be the same thing. We're just pushing it once and then again. Now, we don't have to assign that. Oh, I just have to. OK, so what I'm doing here, just so you know. So you see how I had um, the, uh, I left Wirecast in the background, yes. and yeah. then I had the, um, the editor in the foreground and right. I pushed the button. The reason for that is because I'm not currently broadcasting. Right. So I want the icon to be in the off position, in right. the off state. Right. So now when I go back to Telestream Wirecast and I push that button again, watch up at the top, a little bit to the left, not quite the middle, when I push that. See that broadcast icon lit up? Mm -hmm. Now if I push it again, it's going to wrap up the stream and there it's off. Oh, okay. See that? And on the switch, on the button, on the stream deck, the icon changes from off to on. And uh, I can visually see that I'm broadcasting or not. So you can understand, like, you're able to just program anything that you want with this. Let's look at the folders now, Sasha. I said this is important to me. Let's create a new folder for this, and we're going to actually call this Wirecast. It's so easy. Like, this took me five minutes to figure out, and I didn't look at the manual. <laughs> I can now browse for an icon, and I'm going to just jump into my resource folder in Telestream Wirecast's installation folder, and I can, cre I can create an icon on the, not just on the screen, but on the actual screens that are buttons. Like, we're talking about 15 little screens that are touch buttons. And each one can be individually and dynamically changed. So I'll just use the Wirecast icon. I think that looks good. Watch how quickly, see how it changed up on the camera? Now, if I push that button, the Wirecast button, it opens the folder, and now I've got the broadcast or not broadcast. Watch the broadcast icon in Wirecast as I do that. Right now I'm broadcasting and switching cameras. Go back, let's turn off the broadcast, and watch, there it's off. See that? How? cool is that? Now, with the folders, Sasha, mm -hmm. I said that I, I really love the folder feature. Right. There are 15 buttons on the Stream Deck. Mm -hmm. 15 buttons, and each one can be a folder. Okay? Cool. So, we've got 14 sub-buttons on every single one of those 15 buttons. We're talking wow. a cumulative total of, basically, this thing has 210 active hotkeys. It's amazing. If you code it that way. That's incredible. Nobody probably needs that many, but consider I can have one for Wirecast that's a button for Wirecast. I can have one for Office Suite. I can have one for whatever. But then take it one step further, I can create profiles in the program that controls the Stream Deck. Right. And each profile I can assign to a different application. So as soon as I open Wirecast, it automatically loads the Wirecast profile into the Stream Deck. As soon Ooh. as I open Atlas, it loads the Atlas um, profile into the screen, onto I the Stream Deck. I love that cool. idea. Incredible. So it's really unlimited. Now, if 15 buttons is too much for you, so you look at this and you think, okay, this, this is really, really great for a broadcaster like Robbie. And we'll get into focus there. 15 buttons, 200 and 210 active hotkeys in folders. Maybe it's too much for you. Now, they have just released the Stream Deck Mini, which we also carry. And the Stream Deck Mini has only six buttons. Okay. So six with five in the subfolders. So you're looking at 30 active hotkeys. That's okay. More than enough for uh, your desk at home or, or whatever it is that you're doing. 
Just a quick correction. During post-production, we thought, hey, let's just try it. And we created a nested subfolder within a folder. It appears that you can create as many subfolders as you'd like. So basically, the Stream Deck can hold an unlimited number of hotkeys. A folder within a folder within a folder. So you have to check out Stream Deck. I'm, I, I have to say I'm entirely pleased with this. Jeff, you've oh, yeah. seen it for two weeks now. Yeah, it's been amazing. As a companion to Telestream Wirecast, it's been fantastic. And you can see how we've utilized it there. It's instantaneous camera switching for us, but it's not limited to broadcasting. So I want to stress, even though it's called the Stream Deck, even though I am using it as a streaming interface, because I can program any of those buttons to do anything that I want within Windows 10 or Mac OS, um, I have no limitations on what it's capable of. So that's it's really cool. just my own creativity. The question will come in, is it compatible with Linux? Uh, unfortunately, at this point, not yet. And that's because the driver software has to be loaded on the computer, and it's only available for Windows and Mac. However, uh, I did notice that somebody is working on a Node.js uh, interface for it so that it will become compatible with Linux eventually, but it's not there yet, right. and it's unofficial. Um, so it's not like something that you program and plug in and it's going to work on any computer. Mm -hmm. It's something that the driver is actually running on my t Telestream Wirecast computer and when I plug it into the Telestream Wirecast computer it loads and connects and allows me to interface with it. I'm glad you mentioned that because as you were going through the presentation uh, Lichen in the chat room happened to notice that you had a very weird looking version of Linux on your screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well Telestream Wirecast requires either Microsoft Windows or uh, Mac OS. Right. We, don't, we don't do Mac here so it had to be a Windows broadcast system that we use so that's what mm. we're tied to and so this is a perfect companion for that. So if you have a Windows or a Mac machine this is a, an amazing interface. Check it out at cat5.tv slash stream deck and if you come up with any clever ideas ideas for what it can be used for, we would love to hear from you. Let us know. Ooh.